Um, thanks for coming. I'm Mike Segerblom. They asked me to moderate this. Um, we're going to make a very brief presentation. We've got a, a really impressive panel that uh, I've had the opportunity over these last few weeks to communicate with a bunch. Um, we're literally 10, 15 minutes, and then we're really going to jump straight into Q&A so that we make sure that the conversation goes um, where you would like it to go or where, where it's most helpful to you. So, you know, the, the topic they wanted us to focus on was most of you here have sailing organizations of one kind or another. You have a yacht club, a community sailing center, a uh, college sailing facility, whatever, um, and the concept being that you've already got infrastructure of some sort. And uh, our kind of focus here is why would you want to get involved with high school sailing? And if you do determine that you do want to get involved with high school sailing, how would you go about doing that? Um, and so without further ado, we're going to kind of go through our panel, present some, some things. Um, diversity would be one of, the, one of the key issues. So I'm going to introduce our first speaker, who's Tim Hogan. He's the president of high school sailing. Tim and I started working together um, almost 30 years ago on youth sailing. Tim has been intimately involved in youth sailing, and in particular high school sailing for the, all of those years. His kids are long graduated and done and grown and having kids, and he's still involved in donating all of his time and effort. And uh, for the last 10 years, he, or better part of 10 years, he has led high school sailing through a tremendous growth. And so, Tim, why don't you uh, let us know. schools in every five years, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've now created, we've created a crisis and it's like, okay, how, how am I going to run this? And uh, we're now focusing on this organization as a real organization and, and how do we expand? And so this last couple of years we've added a website, general website, we now have seven districts and they now each have the same website. We've uh, improved our database, and we now are uh, coming out with a, a new scoring program. So we're, we're trying to establish uh, the foundation. And uh, what, what's interesting, going around the country, we have seven districts, and I spent a lot of time with each district, and <clears throat> each of them are different. They all are, are uh, structured a different way. We have teams that are two-man teams. We have teams that are 40-person teams private schools, public schools. They associate with uh, uh, high schools. Or the high schools associate with the uh, yacht clubs, with community sailing centers, the Sea Scout base, you name it. That's how kids are getting out there on the water. And uh, it's really fun talking to people and saying, you know, my daughter is starting this high school team. And so I'm helping her to to how to start it. And some of the problems are they go to the, the principal and say, no, you can't start a high school sailing team. You know, what about the insurance and the liability? And so we keep going over these different hurdles. But what's fun is that we're adding, we, we probably add 40, 50 schools a year and we lose uh, some schools. But so we keep gradually growing. So it's pretty exciting what we're doing and uh, it's fun to be part of this. Um, I think that's all I want to say. We've got a few uh, people that are involved with yacht club and community programs. But I think one of the things that I, I keep focused on is that in our box of high school sailing, we have uh, you know maybe the top 5% of the teams go to the nationals. 
And so what I need to remind our board with is what are we doing for everybody else? How are we helping them? And we, you know, our, our mission statement really is to get, have kids, we want them to have fun and we want them to get out in the water and we want to teach them how to sail. And, and, uh, and that's kind of our mission. And I think we're, we're, we're successful because of that. So with that, I will pass it off. Okay, um, I, I'm, I took over for Tim running the uh, Pacific Coast Interscholastic about eight, nine years ago. Um, and we were at about 50, 60 schools and we've grown to 100. Um, Tim started the growth and it's just continued. But the, the, the key points that I wanted to hit on are um, that, and these guys are gonna be the best example of it, everybody does it differently and that's great and it's good and we're, the way our, this organization is structured is to do that. High school sailing is different from youth sailing, um, and that's important and good. How is it different? Two or three things. One is it's a team sport, and I have had the opportunity to coach several college sailors of the year as well as very um, successful individuals, and it's really a great experience for them to become involved in high school and or college sailing and realize that I can't win this by myself. And, they're, and, I, and the team is the team. Um, these are the people that go to my school. I have to work with what I have here. I can't go out and pick a new crew or, or do something. So I need to figure out as a, uh, an individual and in particular a leader, how am I going to motivate them to, um, so that we all end up where I kind of want to be. And uh, it's an amazing transition um, for most of the kids to suddenly realize that this isn't just all about me, but that if those crews don't want to work as hard as I want to work, and if, the, if my teammates that have to go out there and sail on the water and their scores count just as, many, um, as much as my scores and I don't get to help them because I'm not actually in their boat, how is this going to work? And then, of course, all the logistics and everything. So that's a key aspect to um, what I think the other thing that I think is critical to our success is that um, we, we do two division sailing. Most of the time that leaves half the people on shore half the day. Social interaction at, at the high school age is unbelievably critical. It's a fully co-ed sport. We're so close to 50-50, we're 60-40 more girls in many places. Um, so this is a really fully co-ed sport. We travel a lot, weekend travel, hotel stays, camping, a variety of things um, are, are part of the socialization of the thing and part of the reason that people come back. And then as Tim, Tim spoke, you know, with 100 teams, we've got five or 10 of the top teams in the country. They are extremely um, well organized and, and uh, top sailors, but it's not really all about them. It's mostly about team number 40 or 50 of our 100 because that's where the bulk is, that's where the new people are coming in. A statistic, um, we bring a huge amount of people into the sport of sailing because there's a couple of kids and their families that have been involved in youth sailing. They get to high school, they get involved in high school sailing, and they're like, well, we need a team, we need, pe we need crews, we need people. They go back to campus, they put up posters and say, hey, join the sailing club. Um, they walk around, they go, hey, Susie, have you ever thought about going sailing? They find out about people who sail in the summers, they don't race, they don't belong to the yacht club, but Susie actually sails with her uncle every summer in Maine um, because he has a boat and she goes back and spends a couple weeks with him. So she's sailed before, but she had never raced a sailboat, and sure, I'll come down, check it out, try it out. So I, we don't know what the statistic is yet, but it's a very high percentage of our high school sailing teams are newbies. They are not from youth sailing, because, but a lot of the energy. Partnerships. It's a partnership between the kids being the primary energy. Their parents, in almost all cases, have to jump in to make this work. A yacht club, a community sailing center, some, some access point um, has to be part of the partnership. In some cases, the school is also a partner. In many of the cases, they are a very minimal or maybe almost non-existent partner. Many of our high school sailing teams exist almost without the knowledge of the, um, the school. Um, so putting that partnership together and the, and the energy is key to the success. And so now I, I segue to the skin the cat differently. We have two individuals here who are highly successful organizations and, and leaders of their organizations who do it completely differently. One is the largest high school program in at a yacht club that I'm aware of, and one of the most successful, 
And uh, we'll start with that. This is Bobby Collins. He runs Chicago Yacht Club's youth sailing program, and uh, they have over 100 kids in their high school sailing program. Good morning. Uh, I'm originally from Ireland, so I moved to the U.S. about four years ago. And when I came here, I was amazed at high school. In fact, very jealous of the opportunity that all the high schoolers have. In Ireland, you're on your own. You go through the process. You do all the training by yourself. You're part of your club, very similar to summer sailing. And when I saw the high school program, I was like, this is something that needs to be in every country and every club in the country. So I run a program that has 115 sailors, seven high schools, four full-time staff, and we travel all over the country, and we introduce about 75 of our sailors to the sport. So we take most of our sailors as freshmen in high school, never being on a boat or being on a sunfish or a Hobie cat, and never racing, never really sailing at um, a racing background. So it's, it's a pretty big program. And it's grown from about five sailors back when the Yacht Club started the program to 115, and us actually having to unfortunately turn sailors away, which is a crazy thing when everybody's been talking about the sport dying and nobody's getting into it. High school is probably the only, it's the only part of the sport that I see is growing and has huge potential. So we hosted Mallory Nationals last year. Our kids got to see the top 20 teams in the country come. A lot of our sailors, by the end of high school, the reason they go to college is sailing. Their basis of, I'm going to Boston College, is not because Boston College is a great school. It's because they have an amazing sailing team. And for those sailors, that's awesome. And we have sailors gone through who are all Americans who never sailed before they were freshmen. From the Yacht Club point of view, why, why do high school sailing? Well, it pays for three full-time staff just in high school alone. So you have 10 weeks in the fall, 10 weeks in the spring, and that funds three full-time staff that we can develop a phenomenal program with full-time staff. And you probably know that if you have a full-time staff, you can have a better structure for your summer programs and your other programs. So that's one huge benefit of high school programs. Um, we started an adult sonar program about three years ago. And the focus was to get people out sailing, the adults. And the club comes to look at it and go, well, there's not a lot of adults using them. We ran out of space for our juniors, and we put 30 of our juniors, who are high school sailors, in sonars. I don't know of anyone else in the country doing that. And we paid for the adult program using the juniors. So the Yacht Club now looks at it and goes, 75% jump in revenue, and it's all coming from the juniors. So that's helping promote other programs in the club, and we're buying two new sonars, which are going to be used for other people in the club. So it's, when you look at high school sailing, it really helps to develop your yacht club, not just the high school sailing. And we'll have a lot of questions here. We're, we're going to get our last speaker. Um, so now we move to the opposite end. One of the largest, most successful community boating programs in one of the biggest um, urban areas in the, in the country, uh, community boating in, in Boston. And uh, Andy Hurley, he's a great college sailor and uh, runs a, a very different program that he's going to tell you about. Thanks, Mike. Um, actually, we're in New Bedford, so community, community boating center in New Bedford, Mass. Um, yeah, we're in, on the opposite spectrum of Bobby. Um, so our organization's uh, mission is to teach positive life values to at-risk youth through boating. So our organization does not focus at all on the competitive aspect of sailing. We just want to get kids on the water in a positive environment with positive mentors. Um, so how we engage, we engage with high school sailing on three different levels. Um, one, we play host to a local school, Bishop Stang, who's a very competitive program. Um, all we do for them is we provide them a facility, provide them boats, sailboats, power boats, and let them be. That's our, our only uh, relationship with them, is just providing them access to the water and equipment. Um, the second thing we do, which we started doing this year, is uh, we're really getting high schools involved with the REACH program from U.S. Sailing. So that's U.S. Sailing's STEM education program. Uh, we partner with a local charter school as actually part of their marine science class where they come to us during their school day and we get them on the water. Um, next fall, we're gonna roll it out to the public school system as an after school program. So that's how we're getting high school on the waters through the REACH program. Um, and the third way is we do have a lot of kids that 
we're not competitive in the summer, but they love sailing. They love the water, and they just want to keep doing it. So we get kind of an, an umbrella high school program after school for the various local organizations to be able to send kids to, and we just get them on the water. Uh, a couple years ago, uh, we partnered with Chuck Fontaine at the Mass Maritime Academy to uh, basically start a, it was a sub-JV level regatta where we're just basically getting a bunch of high school kids on the water together from different organizations and just having a fun time sailing. So we're really focused on the, the real bottom of the barrel. A um, little different than Bobby's program, but just as important. We're getting a lot of kids on the water. Great, thanks. I think, uh, you know, what are we really talking about here? Well, Tim wants to go from 500 to 800. Um, Bobby's telling us he's already turning kids away. Um, that's the problem. That's basically true. There aren't enough boats. There aren't enough facilities. There are not enough well-trained quality coaches. There are not enough resources. There's not enough money, certainly. We all know that this is not free. It's not free, but it's probably the least expensive way that you can get involved, certainly in sailboat racing, if not sailboating in general. Um, and many of you are the key to that. You already have a facility at least, quite possibly a fleet of boats sitting in the boatyard or on the, on the docks um, that could be uh, associated. Why would you want to get involved with this? They've given you a few good, you know, there's some economic reasons, some others. I can tell you that most of the yacht clubs and all of the community sailing centers and most of everything in California is on public tidelands. And so all of those organizations are, for the most part, are associated with public leases. And when you put a private yacht club on a public piece of property, there's a, particularly these days, there's a lot of questions that get asked. Well, what better than to be shown to be helping your community, public and private schools, um, access the water through your private institution that is doing you a lot of other services, but you also can pump up what a quality deal you're doing for the community by being associated with high school sailing. So that might be the angle that, that's good for you. Membership, pumping people through the, 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 this program is, is, you know, he said 75 of their 115 kids didn't sail before their high school sailing program. They get involved in high school sailing, maybe they go on to do college sailing, they come back, come back home, hey, I wanna join the yacht club and you know, hang out. Maybe they join while they're juniors, most of our kids do. Um, so uh, membership can be another reason. Um, Again, I th there's a thousand different reasons out there why you might want to get associated with it. My guess is most of the questions are associated around, okay, maybe I am interested in it, but how? And so I guess that that's the point at which I would open up the Q&A and maybe we can direct the questions and there's a lot of expertise up here. Um, you know, if you are interested in doing it, what are your questions, what are your concerns, and what are your problems? So, um, my question really has to do with the funding part. Um, I know that's money out, I know they have to do PE. I need to find a way to tap into federal money, even though I hate it. I'm only privately funded, but I think we have to go the route in order to broaden the sport of how we do this, generally speaking. It's always the biggest problem. Are those associated questions? No, I, I, yeah. I, I, I can tell you that. Look at your governor's speech. <clears throat> Michigan's governor just came out, and he's pushing STEM real hard and heavy. A great place to have a nerd for a governor. Okay. Can I explain how those duty works? Okay, we have a great program. Everybody loves what we're doing. Um, they're going to the school. They're getting the right out. They're raising the funds. We get so. So that has to stop. So we want to do that with us. You know what I'm getting? Okay. This is California I'm talking about. Well, in, in California, I'm sure that you've got STEM applications that are there, grants that are there for that STEM application. That's what I'm going to go after for start a program. Yeah, I mean, 
I run a, I mean, we run a community sailing center. We skin the fundraising cap every which way you can. We run a boat donation program. We run a cash donation program. We apply for grants. We do get some state-oriented grants that um, that are hesitant to be focused on anything competitive, but are very anxious to be focused with average kids and boating safety education. Um, I am just getting into the STEM thing heavily, and I do believe that there's a lot of funding when we have some organizations. So uh, does anybody else have any great, uh, quick funding? I, 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 when I heard about, I'm sorry, I don't remember the names, but the program in New Bedford, my impression was that you are able to contact various groups that are actually looking to place their students or their clients or whatever you want to call them someplace and that they themselves have the opportunity to pay for these services. Is that a fair assessment or is that where you are? Or? Um, we, we actually do joint fundraising with the organization so we kind of uh, realize there's an opportunity to work together and we'll probably submit grants together. Yeah. Um, work with another organization and you're partnering up to write grants, it's, it's really powerful. But, but it, it's tied right in with, I mean, our, our mission is getting at-risk youth on the water, so it's, it's everything we do and we get funding from private donors through foundation grants, through just across the board. And we just we roll get, this right we into it. statement, uh, three teachers, 110 Rocky students, and you raising money, how do you get the money to pay for the three teachers or coaches? That was oh, yeah. Same question. So, uh, well, uh, two comments that, that lead up there. First of all, for those of us that have struggled with this sport as a rich white and sometimes male, although I think we're making reasonable progress in that area, um, if you need to knock the edge off of that when you're looking for um, funding mechanisms, there is no better way than to partner with an at-risk group or an underprivileged group or, or somebody who in fact absolutely needs it. So if, you know, if, as soon as you put boating or sailing or whatever on there, there's going to be some automatic you know, move mentally to go, oh, well, why would I want to support that when you can then show you know, literally hundreds of kids from a clearly underprivileged and that it's providing an opportunity for them. So that, that's one comment I have. The second thing is um, you know, there are different models. Certainly most of the high school sailing teams are funded primarily by the parents. Let's face it, it's, uh, there's very little funding coming from the schools. Um, only in a rare private school case might there be some. Um, and there is some in New England and some, uh, some around the country, but not very much. Most of it is funding coming from the parents. In most cases, as things get more organized, I just set up a 501c3 simply for our home high school sailing team. We're that far along, our budget is that big, we have 30 sets of parents, and we run fundraisers, we do the whole deal, we pump $75,000 a year through the mechanism um, in order to pay the coach and cover travel expenses and, and make the whole thing work. So that's a team that's been around for a long time and is very successful. But um, so, uh, you know, scholarships are often the answer to then getting kids involved in the program that wouldn't otherwise be able to afford it. You know, $500 a semester twice in fall and the spring is a very common um, fee for the kids to be involved in the program. Bobby was saying it's the same, ours is about the same, and they're in Chicago, we're in, in Orange County. Um, so we have a lot of kids that can't come up with that. Well, that's probably the easiest thing I've ever gone out and tried to fund. I need to raise some money so some kids that can't afford to participate in this activity can participate in this activity. Compared to all the other things I've tried to raise money for, that one is a, is a really piece of cake. Um, Correct. Is that an average? That, that's just a number I'm familiar with. That's a pretty, probably a pretty highly developed program with very professional coaching, with uh, boats and equipment and the whole deal. And, and again, it'll range all over the place. But I, that just so people had some order of magnitude. Actually, uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm from New Jersey. Um, Rutgers wanted to start a sailing team. And we, Alex, Alex Summer, high school's not sailing, college isn't sailing, our club uses 
votes were community voting. Everybody shared in that, but we didn't all start from scratch. We, Rutgers took the lead, but everybody helped. So at the other extreme, my son pays $50 a senior to be on the high school team. There you That's go. There you go. And I mean, that is an absolute perfect example of how this whole thing can come together and everybody can win. They brought the price down. They got all these different groups using them. The boats are now going out all the time. Uh, the next thing, if they haven't already done it, they'll have a, a sinking fund and they'll be able to replace those boats because they're getting used a lot. So they'll need to be replaced potentially more, more often than they were before. But so everybody's happier. We got newer, better equipment. Great, great example. All right. Step one, how do we start? How do you get started? I mean, it, 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 where, that's... Where do I go on the web to find the forms? Okay. Well, it's school, this simple. hssailing.org is the website, highschoolsailing.org. Um, again, brand new websites, and then all seven districts have the same format, although completely different content. Every one of the districts does things a little bit differently. They have regional rules and, and things. So you can go to that. There is a, um, a, a set of material on that website. How to start a high school sailing team. It's 30 or 40 pages worth. Easy, qu quick reading that will give you a lot of little ideas and insights. To start a high school sailing team, you need a high school sailor, some level of acknowledgement from the school that this might be okay, or at least that I'm not going to try to stop you. And you fill out a form and it's $120. That pays both your, well, I shouldn't say it's $120. Each district is a little bit different. That's what our district is. $85 of that goes to the national organization to help with these websites and these databases and these scoring programs and the infrastructure to, this, to the system. We have an office here in San Diego, the High School Sailing Administrative Office. If you have questions or you need materials, something you see, you can contact that office during all business hours during the week. Um, and uh, that $120 we consider the, the gauntlet. We get people, oh, can we get a, you know, can, can we avoid that fee or whatever? If you can't raise the first $120 to pay that, that fee, you're probably not going to make it with the rest of the program. So that is the gauntlet. But it's that simple. It's an online registration process, um, and your team is up and going. Um, we require that there be an adult at every competition and thing who takes responsibility for that team. Um, and from there, you can take that one sailor. We, the Cressy is a pretty well-known single-handed high school event. Most uh, areas have Cressy qualifiers. They may even have other single-handed events. So with one sailor, you can go to all the laser regattas and compete in high school sailing. And then you can build it from there. And the second sailor, the third sailor, the fourth sailor, most teams need a minimum of four people in two-division double-handed sailing to be a quote-unquote complete team. And to really get four people to all the competitions, you're probably going to need five or six because somebody's always got a conflict or is sick or is injured or something. Um, and so the immediate progression is to try to build a roster to five or six or seven or eight um, people. That's a real team. Um, that's a fully viable team to do everything. And you can win the nationals with four people. Um, question. Are you a yacht club or are you a sailing foundation? Sailing foundation. And where are you located? St. Clair, Michigan. In Michigan. So first I'm question is, is, yeah. is. I encourage you to contact your rep. So when you go on the SL, the high school site, there are the seven that Mike said, the divisions that you can go into and contact your area representative. Yeah, there's an area, a and dis then district then president. And then, that is. And, and, and then it's some. Down. <laughs> so, some, links, so, some districts have links, so start talking to as many people as you can. I would go to your local yacht club, your community sailing program, figure out where boats are. How do you how do you how do you get going? Get all the boats and get the foundation up, or it's just a matter of clearing the fee. So hey, we'll turn it yes, call me, call me, call me. <laughs> help you out. I mean, there, there's so many success stories out there. I was talking to Corey Sergal yesterday. She's a uh, former Olympic sailor at, at uh, Rochester Yacht Club. She says, you know, I now have 25 kids. They're from 13 high schools. So the, cl the, the Yacht Club is now running a, a high school program. You know, for, forget what school you're, you go to. Come join the program. So they get 25 kids out. Real quick, does it make a difference? 
effort that we can, five or six high schools join together to get a sufficient amount of a team together so that you can actually join and travel so they can operate as one general. team? Only as a team. You can't yeah. come yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. Only the tier three. Yeah. 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 That gets pretty technical of yeah. what you can and can't do, but there's lots of JD regattas that you can. And each district has a little bit different ruling. We want to get kids out on the water. And so, you know, so what does Corey do with 25 kids? Well, you know, start organizing races and get the kids out there. And well, if you have two kids at your school, go find two more friends and bring them out there. But there's another story that was just fabulous. Last year, uh, actually, Mike and I went down to, uh, to uh, Charleston last year. We met with all the high school teams. And we got out of it, number one is you guys need to start working together. These clubs, there's like three or four clubs, you need to start working together. And where are the boats coming from? And they're, they lack boats, well let's figure out how to get more boats. But to me, it was a classic case of, you guys need to communicate and, and, and work together, and, and this will get better. Uh, but there was a story there, I talked to this lady their, their family moved from Virginia to uh, North Carolina, like 100 miles north of Charleston. And uh, they promised her daughter that they could go start a, a sailing team. So they had a, a, some community center, they had boats. Her daughter went to the high school and said, I want to start a team. And they said, great. And they put out a notice board. They had 150 kids show up. And it was like, oh my god. <laughs> That's about 125 too many to start a team, but it was like, that's what's, what's happening. These kids, you give them an opportunity. So there's plenty of people that can help you. So that's just, what we're doing. Just on that, for us with high school, we start high school sailing the first week in September. All the other varsity sports start mid-August. So anybody who doesn't make one of those teams they go, well, what do I do in the fall? So we have hundreds of kids look at our program because they don't have any other sport. Right? And sailing, a lot of us do it. You know, I couldn't play football or rugby because I got a bad back, but I can sail. So we get a lot of kids. You know, we turn up and say, come down and check out our facility. We have hundreds of kids come down who are just saying, sailing looks cool. I saw the America's Cup, and they just come down and see. And you don't have to immediately sign up as a high school team if you want you to, but just go sailing as four kids out of a yacht club, start practicing, start going upwind, start teaching them how to tack, and it snowballs really quick, like unbelievable, it's kind of scary, where we had triads and we had kids lining up on the dock, and we were like, these kids have never sailed before, they don't own life jackets, but they have heard really good things on the social side, they go, well, I'll try it, and you just gotta, you'll, you'll be quite fascinated how quickly it snowballs. And you don't have, you don't have to go to regattas, you could say, let's set a target of going to this one regatta, which allows us to send four kids to, even if they're not all from the same school, and just go. And what you'll do is you'll meet teams, and you'll go, oh, that's an interesting way you guys do it. And then you go, okay, well, the next, let's, next semester, let's go to three regattas. And then you'll notice you'll have a full team, and then you can start going to more regattas. And then before you know it, you will have a roster of 20 kids, all fighting and wanting to go to nationals. And in our district, we've actually had to bring in qualifiers for qualifiers because we have too many teams turning up for the qualifiers. <coughs> so it's, it's literally go sailing, pick one regatta that you want to go to, the kids will have a blast, they love the travel, and it snowballs. That's as easy as, as it's starting it. That snowball thing, 20 kids is the key in high school. I've done this for a long time. When you have 20 kids approximately, plus or minus, the socialization all of a sudden starts to work. If they click into little groups, there's enough people to have several little groups and they'll find their own place. And the snowball will begin when you get kind of up in that number. And so those kids, may, that may be two or three or four different high schools in order to have 20 kids, but socially it becomes very successful if you're getting 20 or more kids together for practice and for travel and for things. It doesn't need that be that many for travel for it to be successful, but, but yes. Um, I, I'm just wondering, from other people in the room, um, integrating the high school <coughs> into uh, a, a yacht club. We have a separate um, uh, high school sailing team 
we allow them access, we allow them to use the club, but they function independently. Um, they're always the same, they seem to have a great turnover of coaches, um, they're always looking for coaches. I'm wondering how many um, clubs take over or have a partnership with the high school where their full-time sailing director, if they have one, manages and coaches that team. Um, if does so I know for a fact that it's done every, every which way you can describe. Uh, I can tell you at San Diego Yacht Club down here, they pretty much use Andy's model. They provide the facility, they provide the boats, they provide a lot of infrastructure, but each team has its own coach and has its own independent mechanism. They cooperate and they help to bring some things together. Um, at Newport Harbor, we Newport Harbor High School uses the Yacht Club and, you, and generally uses the a junior program head coach director as, as the coach. It can be done all different ways. Um, there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Um, sometimes that little bit of independence can allow the, the team and the program to work more successfully with a little bit of independence. But one of the advantages is the compensation that the head sailing director at your yacht club gets. He gets paid by the high school team. So he, you, can, you can afford a, a, a higher quality coach. And so it, it's a win-win for for the yacht club and the high school. That's well, we don't have a, a year-round sailing director. Uh, I'm wondering if this, and we'd like to have one. This That's would exactly have what he's He's got three just <coughs> year-round people. He uses them all summer for non-high school activities, but he funds them in the off-season, so he's got higher level, better quality people that he has attachment to all year long because of high school sailing, and then he gets the advantage of that for his entire summer program. That's a big one. The one of the problems, and I know that club and that team, is that it's a salary of like five thousand dollars total. Sure. So oh, I mean, I, mean, no, I really would say if you went through the five hundred teams that we have in high school sailing, almost um, probably three hundred of those either do it for free or um, do it for so little that might as well be free. Uh, you know, some I know, know there are yeah. some teams at the top that are paying top, you know, fifty dollar an hour rates um, to. Some of the best coaches in the country. Just well, you, you said 20, 20 is a number for you, and that you know, works for you. How many boats? That number twenty. Well, it, best that's ten. I mean, if you get all twenty of those kids on the water in double-handed boats and yeah. ten, ten boats, you obviously can't have different number of boats for different size teams all the time. <laughs> the, the boats so boats uh, he's got a, he's got a fully integrated schedule where he brings in his younger kids some of the days of the week and brings his older and more experienced kids in other days of the week. <laughs> and uses the weekend some of the time in the off season. So, I mean, again, when you get to those problems, there's all, all different ways. I mean, Tim and I, when we were doing this in the late 80s and the early 90s in, in, in high school sailing, we picked the FJ. This was the greatest boat in the world or whatever, but there were already 150 of them at the colleges. And we figured at least for the first few years, when we needed a few more boats, we could go tap on the colleges and say, hey, can we borrow your boats? We're gonna have a big event. And they'll go, well, now we have them all in FJs, and we have hundreds of them in both college and high school. And two weeks from now, we will have 64 teams at a regatta in San Francisco. 64 boats, 64 different teams, which is about 53 different high schools, all at one regatta in two starting lines of approximately 32 boats each. And that's what our events, our main high school events look like. That's how we skin the equipment deal. Everybody brings their own boats to all regattas here in California, so we're used to that. Everybody has a triple trailer, and wherever you're going, that's how we do it. Um, but we now have a huge pool resource that when we have to, we can borrow and trade and charter and, and share and, and move things around. Now, we still have areas that don't have enough boats to meet the need that they have for their particular program. But do you rotate boats? We do, absolutely. The two division, rotate boats every race. And then our district has purchased 64 sets of sails. We're on our fourth purchase. They're supposed to arrive on a ship tomorrow from Sri Lanka. Um, we purchased 64 sets of sails. So we only use those for those high school regattas. That really helps in the equalization of the boats. The boats are all class legal club flying juniors, but the sails knocks off those edges that might be between the, a lot of the differences with those with those boats, and then we put those sails back in the van, take them, put them in the rafters until 
next month when we have an extra guy. Is that Jay Class voted in Sri Lanka sales? Uh, we, we bought the sales from North Every Sales and they do their uh, institutional creation of sales in Sri Lanka. I have, uh, I have two questions. One is, one is can, you, can you guys speak to, um, I'm sure there are a variety of different ways, can you give us some examples of how you fund the, the, uh, the uh, acquisition and then probably more importantly the maintenance of the boats that you're using um, between the, the, say, the club program and the high school program that are acting synergistically. And then Bobby, can you tell us about uh, how long your schedule is in, in Chicago, which is obviously, obviously doesn't run all winter. So, I guess I did answer probably both of them. In terms of, I'm very lucky with my program. It, I came in and was very established, but since I've come in, we've grown, we've doubled the size of the program. And I just want to say that you don't necessarily need FJs at 420s. The ultimate goal is to get kids sailing that. But we, where we are physically, cannot have any more 420s. We just don't have any space. It's city, city lot land. But we do have sonars. So we started putting kids in sonars. We're teaching kids high school sailing in sonars. So if you have any boat, you can teach them high school sailing in any boat. With the ultimate goal, once the program gets going, then maybe looking. We buy six brand new 420s every year. We spend six figures on new equipment, and we sell all our boats, and a lot of startup programs then will come and purchase our used boats. In fact, the guys from Detroit Country Day started by purchasing our boats. There's, uh, you guys are saying, there's people selling boats for $500, $1,000, and they buy those boats, and they raise some money, and they, you know, they use volunteers to maintain them. So it doesn't really matter how good your boats are as long as they're pretty much all the same. So, with us, we buy all new equipment because we have race teams. We have built a 10-year capital plan for our power boats and for our 420s, and we rotate a quarter of a fleet every single year. Now, that's the ultimate goal, but it gets very expensive. Some of the programs start by buying boats, and once you spend the $500, it's not a huge amount more to you know, keep the boats going. So is it CYC that does that? Yeah, that's my question. Yeah. Is it CYC that does that? Or? CYC buys all the boats. Do you and ever get money from the school districts? That, I mean, you gone Almost school? never. Never? Almost what never. Are, do, can you get PE credits? Yes. Oh, yeah. There is a good, reasonable percentage of schools that are able to get PE credit at both the public and the private schools. That's a mechanism that does work. It has some potential problems. Let, let, let's stay for just a minute on this equipment. So let me just build you the perfect world. The perfect world is there's a 501c3, okay? And because now we have the ability to take donations and do whatever, that becomes our capital. And we've got a yacht club. We've got maybe multiple high school sailing programs. Maybe we have an at-risk program um, associated with, with it. So now we all get together and we sit down and we say, okay, we need to buy 10 for these FJs, whatever. And like he said, it really just doesn't matter. Now we got a bunch of different reasons to do that. We got a bunch of different people to go to that are going to have a different appeal. Um, this guy over here is like, you know, I'm not giving money to the yacht club kids. Their parents have plenty of money; they can pay for themselves, whatever. But man, those at-risk kids, I, you know, I, I got a little extra cash. I'd like to help out with that. You got a, a, a commerce group in your thing that think our, our local high schools. Wow, that'd be really cool if we could help them out and make that sort of thing. So. You know, pooling money together to do that um, is the perfect world. And again, as Tim talked about cooperation amongst the clubs and these other organizations. And again, you know, there are a lot of politics. There are a lot of reasons why sometimes it's better for the coach to be independent from the for the institution. There are a lot of reasons why it's probably more efficient for the for everybody to be integrated and, and interrelated. But some. Sometimes for political reasons, that just isn't going to be the, the way to skin the cat, or at least right now. Maybe we'll get there. When everybody realizes, oh, this high school thing's pretty cool. This is good. Maybe we, you know, let's get more invested in this. Then maybe it's easier to talk about um, sharing a person and, and sharing those costs. At CYC, uh, the basic model, are you, uh, is your junior program self-sustaining, or does CYC fund your capital costs? So in other words, you, 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 the junior program funds the, all these purchases of boats? Yeah, in fact, it's probably the only department in the yacht club that makes money. <laughs> when, when you take out depreciation on the assets, we make a huge profit. But because we buy so much, our bottom line, you know, is probably 20,000 a year. So we fund all these purchases and three full-time staff. 
So, 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 and now, now after that, what, 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 do you, do you pay CYC any kind of a charge for the use of the facilities? Well, we pay all our overhead. We don't pay general overhead like lighting or heat that's paid by the membership dues, but we have junior members too. Yeah. We don't see that revenue. Okay. So purely on a revenue side, smaller programs, you're talking a half a million dollar program. So but like, what I'm, I'm trying to grasp, yeah. Yeah. if There's you're a CYC, Right. Yeah. What are you getting out of it in Why, terms? What is the club getting out of it? Yes. The club's getting out of it's got a foundation that's helping support some high school programs and you know getting city property. Uh, they're members. Oh, you have city property. Yeah, we have city property. Yeah. You know, we try. So we run a snake uh, high school members. program for an inner city school that the foundation funds, so the kids don't pay for that. We fund full-time staff, which help run other events at the yacht club. We. We have junior members who hopefully will become full members. We have parents who join. And the Yacht Club wants to get back to you, you to say that. And one last question. Do you juniors participate in the regular sailing at the club? Yes. How do they do that? Not as much as I want. In fact, that's one of my goals is to yeah. try and get that because we've been very much the sailing school by itself. We're trying to get into, you know, we had the kids sailing the Far 40 Worlds when we uh -huh. had there. We helped get them to help with the uh, 2.4 meters, and we get them involved in all the sailing, but they, a lot of the junior members are getting pulled into beer cans and to frostbiting, and we, up until recently, haven't been doing a good job, but now the kids want to start sailing, and they see what the club has to offer. Now, now one of the, uh, I think the best benefit is, because high school sailing starts in uh, September and ends up in, in May, that if you take a high school sailor <clears throat> starting in September, by the time he comes to, to the summer program the following year, he's probably sailed 100 days, okay? The Yacht Club is now getting the higher quality, better sailor coming in for the sailing program. Why is that important? Because the younger kids are gonna get the benefit. Everybody's gonna see what's going on. And I think at, I've been associated with Newport Harbor Yacht Club, and what happens is, the kids that are 10, 12, 13 that want to be in high school, they see what's going on with the quality of the program and say, you know, I'm going to stick around and stay in sailing mm -hmm. because look how much fun <coughs> these guys are having and look how much better. And so they're, they're, set, they're setting an example. I think that is probably one of the best things, the best, best benefits for the Yacht Club to be involved with. I wanted to back up to your question, just to make it a little clearer, because this is, I probably deal with this more than any other thing. Can we combine schools uh, or kids on a team, and <coughs> how does that work? And the answer is really simple. The answer is no, but the answer is yes. Just about every disc, so ultimate, I mean, would your, would your local high school football team combine? Now, maybe there's a couple places in very rare circumstances, but normally a high school team is a high school team is a high school team, and we preach that. And we remind this pertinent to this discussion, high school sailing should be different from <coughs> yacht club sailing. Club sailing should be club sailing, and high school sailing should be high school sailing. The team emphasis and the fact that, okay, it's high school, guys. Mommy's not coming to class with you. Mommy's not to hang around here. It's you and the coach. And maybe you and the coach don't get along or, you know, see things a little differently. You need to work on working that out. You know, and sometimes that's very different from the yacht club thing. So we think that high school sailing, like those football coaches and those water polo coaches and everything else, there's an advantage to that. But when you're getting a team off the ground, almost every district has some, what we call developmental rule that allows you to borrow sailors, combine teams, do things to help you get down that first part of the runway and get off the ground. Because maybe it's your daughter who's the energy and you're the parent and you you want to help her to make this happen, but she needs some help to put it all together. And you got a yacht club or a community building. You got folks, and you got that whole thing. How are we going to get this deal off the ground? And so she's got to go find Johnny, who sails with his uncle every summer, and now they're two. And then they got to go find a couple more people. High school sailing institutionally wants to force you to become a real high school team. And so ultimately, the answer is no. You know, the answer is you need to sail as a real high school team but there, almost every district has a way to get there that will help you at least in the first year, if not the first couple of years, and with younger and, and new programs. What's the average cost for a kid, year-wise, the rest of them? You sail the same waters I'm sailing, so 
They gotta get them outfitted. They gotta be in wetsuits and I mean, just there's a fish. Yeah, we do t-shirts and board shorts. It's plenty. Yeah. We we just have a mandatory for Welcome spring sale price. Right. Straight away, we're talking five hundred dollars for that. Some of the clubs purchase ten dry suits and rent them out to the kids. I would say for our kids, it's five hundred. 500 for non-members, 450 for members for a season. So you're talking probably thousand dollars alone in just spring and fall, and then a thousand dollars in gear. When you compare that to hockey on the North Shore of Chicago, that's about five percent of the cost of hockey. Really? Yeah, I mean, that in the and, and hockey's an expensive sport. All my kids played soccer at a public school, and I can tell you that every dollar I had to reach into my pocket for that soccer team and the travel and everything and the fundraisers and the whatever was very comparable to what we do in Salem with a national level team traveling all over the country and competing at the highest level. So I, I think the sport is as inexpensive and can be made and particularly if you can subsidize it with nonprofit funds and, and raised funds and you know sometimes there are yacht clubs that are so literally excited about this that you know there's a budget well okay we'll help you get off the ground here's 10 grand you know get, get, get going. Um, well, let's buy those boats, we'll use them. So, I want to try to go for new people. So, at, at our organization, because of things, our clientele can't afford any gear, um, we, we do fundraising to get whatever gear that they need. So, there are avenues and there are some foundations out there that like to support that. Do they share it or they, they share it? Yeah, so we, we all end up between different organizations. So, different kids will use the gear. Let's uh, new people. Oh, new people. <laughs> I represent Tall Ships America. So imagine the, the links between Tall Ships and high school sailing. Now some people won't immediately see this. What it takes is collaboration. Labor is in the middle of the word collaboration. And I had a typo last year, and I spelled it with two O's. And for kids to get involved, it means it has to be cool. Here's a chain of involvement in high school sailing. I'm a Girl Scout, and if there's a Girl Scout leader in San Pedro, California, whose son wanted to sail, and he wanted to sail tall ships. So he became part of our youth crew. Then he got to high school. They, the high school team, Pola Charter School, um, sails with Cabrillo Beach Yacht Club Junior Sailing. Now he wants to go to, to California Maritime Academy, but I think his team is one of the state five ranking teams. I don't race, but tall ships race more slowly than most of them. <laughs> um, and yeah, another thing that could happen at your regattas is that if you have a local tall ship, have it as the place to put the parents, you know, on one boat. Uh, well, that's a sinking ship we want to put the parents on. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to yes, say, I'm sure. No, we don't, I mean, our, our program, we don't care. Uh, we sell out of Yacht Club, um, has always had a reasonably high percentage of membership uh, on the team, but has a reasonably high percentage of non-membership. The Yacht Club is very happy to make, to let those non-members come on during those um, high school sailing hours and days. And I think, in, if you look back over the years, that has served the Yacht Club extremely well in terms of membership development. That, that a lot of those kids have ultimately decided that that might be a place that they want to become associated with. So I, again, I would say it's, a, it's, a group it's across the board. There's probably bigger differentials and there's probably, ours is not. Yeah. Um, Joel, Joel runs the uh, program at Annapolis Yacht Club. How many schools do you have? How many boats? We have three, three and five schools um, that train with us. And we have um, a spring and a fall season and similar to what the Chicago Yeah, it's just like the airlines. Yeah. Everybody doesn't show up every day, so you can oversell those spots and be just fine. Uh, we're at 500 a season, and we have our coaches are club employees, either part time or full time. There's uh, a couple full time people, and we use a lot of part time help. And schools pay us. 
us, the schools are mostly not recognized. Um, we have two public schools that are just kind of fringe activities at those schools. Um, we have a private school that does have a little bit of funding, and they get their pennies paid for by the school, and they're recognized by their school. So we have a pretty big variation. In, in, uh, just right there. Uh, that's that's right. Right. So how long did you see? Uh, eight to ten weeks, depending on how the holidays fall. I'm trying to get everybody, but we're going to have to move quick. Well, uh, ours runs uh, differently than the rest of the, what I'm hearing. Ours is basically the school owns most of it. So the school owns 14, 420, mm -hmm. owns three power boats, wow. has a uh, enclosed trailer. So that's different from us, but I, I know there's a number of major schools yeah. in the Northeast that certainly operate that way. But they, they yeah. won't let us mix schools and add more. So we want to add other schools, but their, their pull is that if people want to stay out, they come to our school. You know, they'll, they'll likely they'll get over that eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 George, let me see that. Uh, Stony Brook, they uh, opened up, it's a private school, they opened up their facilities. And they have three public schools coming to use in their facilities now. The city got involved and said this is a great deal, so they put up some money to go buy new docks for the program. So. You know, how do you, how do you get private schools that have the funding to go help these pro same thing with how do you get a yacht club that has the facilities to go help high school sailing? Try to move around get everyone. Yeah. 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 I have a question. We're in Galveston. We're, we're kind of in a different situation with, than the rest of you. We we have a facility that's being built. It's forty seven million dollar facility finished in three months. And we have those. We have thirty seven MJs as close to 10 sonars we don't and other things more. Yeah. So we don't <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> I got phone numbers to cancel, fly down. It's <laughs> a different situation. Right. <laughs> the problem is recruiting. Uh, our ISSA district is, is weak. Uh, quite weak. Yeah, because, uh, quick answer because we're going to keep moving. Yeah. This man is on your problem. It's his number one thing right now. Well, that's not my question. My question is uh, we want to put a forum on down in our area where we put the Chamber of Commerce with the school principals. With our, we're, we're fortunate enough that Texas A&M and, and George Coleman's dinghy team is right next door and his sailors are quite good. And then our facility. So and then hopefully, you know, put the funding with, with the teaching, with the facility, and then the Chamber of Commerce, or, and the principals will bring us in the kids. The Chamber of Commerce and their business will start something called a sailorship program. Texas A&M will provide the coaching, and the coaching, and we'll provide the staff and the facility. Is that a good plan? Is that a good model? It, it's fantastic, and I am helping out with the uh, Southeast District, the Houston, New Orleans, Gulf, Gulf Coast, and this is an example where we need everybody in that area starting to work together. <coughs> they don't, the clubs don't work together. Uh, the one great thing that we do with high school sailing is we move our championships around the country. Yeah. So this May, we're having the team race championships in Galveston at Lakewood Yacht Club. You've done that already. Charming? Just did that this summer. No, no, in May. Oh, it's this May. May. This May. May. So we're going to be down there. And so this exposure. It, it kind of gets people's adrenaline going on, and, and there's going to be a lot of benefits. And I'm going to come down and spend some time, and I, I'm willing to go help you guys figure out a program. And so, same thing with you. You need help. We're here to help because, we, you know, I, I've been doing it for so long. It, you know, there's so many different ways. That's what's so fun about what we're doing. You kind of get excited about, it. you know. A girl comes in and said, hey, I, I, I'm starting a high school saving thing. You know, and some students do it on their own. It's like, well, how do you help them? So you guys, you need help. Let's figure this out. Well, then can I ask another question? Um, on the website, we work in Corpus Christi. Yeah. And so going anywhere to do anything takes about four hours minimum. Do you have a list of all the high schools that do have teams so that we would know where? All on the website. So when you wrap up that list, you kind of have to wrap up your app. On our website, um, first of all, in each of the seven districts, you go there, of an upper right hand book, contact us. You'll get the leader of the district, and in many cases, like in my large district in California, I have regional people in San Diego, in Orange County, in LA, in San Francisco, and otherwise. So you can go to your most local person, you can talk to the regional person, you can go to the state um, or your own office, depending on what it is that you need. Then you can click. Um, Team directory. In the team directory, it's a, the gentleman who's making the presentation next door on websites and he does it and builds all of our websites and all of our directory. Um, you can 
search that thing by name, by area, by district. You can go in and look at a list of all the active teams in the district. And then down at the bottom, it will show you all the teams that are inactive. And they existed sometime here in the recent past, but this year they didn't activate. Um, but often, oftentimes, reactivating a, a previous program can maybe be more beneficial than, than starting from scratch. Uh, Charlie, I'm Charlie from the City of Eugene, and I work for actually the Parks and Recreation Department. And we kind of, as a business model, decided to go ahead and go after high school sailing after we found out about a uh, fiscal Education Participation Grant that is available, and we work with a partnership with our local school district, and we have that partnership for many, many years. It's a very tight partnership, doing a lot of things. We and them partnered together to go get this grant. This grant will provide us three years of high school sailing funding for non-traditional, well, actually low-income high schools. We'll go in there, they will get free high school sailing, and any other of the kids in the district that want to sign up, they'll have to pay. We charge two fifty a term, or a semester, we don't, we're not on the water as much as the rest of these folks. We don't, we bought boats specifically for fun for our youth program. We did not buy boats, FJs or anything like that to, to go for that idea because we're a community sailing center, we're trying to create fun. And we're not going to buy FJs in the future, we're not going to buy any 420s. We're going to stick with our FIAs because they're fun, kids like to have fun. We're trying to create fun and get kids into high school sailing. So that's kind of our story. And I guess the one thing I wanted to add to this is I spent four years in this area trying to figure out who wanted to play high school ball and who didn't want to play. Uh, the Yacht Club, the Paper Yacht Club, the, the citizens, the parents, who wanted to be involved? Well, it turned out my instructors that I had created in my youth training program, they put their hand up and said, hey, we want to go kick ass on somebody else besides ourselves. We're playing on this pond. So they're the impetus. They're the ones who said, we want to go into our high schools and create this. You've got the boats. You have the wetsuits. You have the the infrastructure, will you go do this? And so yes, they were the impetus to make this happen. We're not working with the aqua. We're not working with the paper aqua because their mindset was not pro-youth. So I would suggest any of you who are thinking about a program, make sure the group that you're representing has a mindset that is pro-youth. If your yacht club hasn't had a youth program or hasn't been into high school, you might want to think why that is. And it could be a mindset. I found out that the kids don't like the high school or the sailing program at the Aqua. They hate it. <coughs> and so that's why they want us to create it separately. Because the mindset of the Yacht Club is anti-youth. I was going to do that for many reasons. Competition often changes the mindset. And all of a sudden, a really successful, thriving junior program at a, at a local institution will change a lot of turn a lot of heads and change a lot of minds. So.
insurance does not stop with members. So, um, yes, it's probably true that a member is less likely to sue their own institution than, than a non-member, and I've been involved in a lot of those discussions, but, um, you know, anyway. So, Three-way partnership. The kids are the passion in the thing. If you don't have that, you probably won't go very far. The parents typically have to step in, and typically more and more these days have an influence in the mechanism. But they don't like to hear from one or two sets of parents that have a private agenda. They like to hear that there's a, a, a groundswell, and, that, and what they also don't like to think is that, oh my God, we're going to create this program for these parents, and it's going to last three years, and then it's going to go away, and it's going to be a huge pain in our butt. Um, so they want to have some vision that it's going to go long term. And then you bring in Andy or myself or one of these people who has a lot of these answers about insurance and facilities and has seen this done. That three partnership is who I sit down with. And I try to sit down with the headmaster or the principal or the highest official because activities directors and athletic directors and all those people, this is just one more thing they're going to have to deal with. It's a bureaucratic, please try to say no. I have a comment I want to make. Uh, I find that my beginning high school students, uh, one of their big motivations is competing against the cross-town school. And, and that's sometimes even bigger than getting on the water itself. So we started our practices uh, keeping the school's practice separate. And the problem with that became that we, the schemes weren't big enough. So we could get two, maybe three boats on the water. We have a cool deal in Newport Beach. We got five high school teams, two very large high school teams, and three smaller teams. They all practice in the same bay. They're all independent. They all sail out of different yacht clubs or community building centers, anything. And they have several practices. Uh, they sail two to three days per week per team. Some of them have JV sophomore practice and then varsity practice and whatever. But the point being that they have separate practices, and then every Thursday, everybody comes together. We have 50 boats that all come together on Thursday afternoon, and let's, you know, let's mix it up. And I just had a story from my life today about uh, you know, from my 15-year-old who's tired of taking it from this one guy on the other across town big rival team. And <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of that going on. Um, and so some mix of both are definitely... It's a huge advantage for the fact that we can get together because they're all very good programs with very good coaches and very good, and it helps our kids. It steps their level up. It steps the level up of some of the lower teams very rapidly. Um, and we have UC Irvine that we sometimes combine with as well, doing college partnerships. And I, I didn't touch on that, but in California, when Tim and I did this, this college partnership thing was huge. Every one of our major regattas is co-hosted were primarily hosted by a college. Um, it's kind of a recruiting thing. Our regattas are so big that you can make a little bit of money if you manage them well. And um, so college is very integrated into our high school scene, and that has been a partnership that has generally worked extremely well. Thank you. trouble in the beginning getting the school to go along with you or whatever. But eventually if you've run a program and you've been reasonably successful and then all of a sudden that's the big you beat that rival school um, uh, down the way and you know all of a sudden they go and they look and they see hundred high schools in all over California, including many of the most prominent institutions. Um, you know, this these days it's becoming kind of competitive in the high school of England. Kids can often choose to go to this school or go to that school. And which programs do you have here and do you have there? So oftentimes if you can get the thing off the ground and under the radar and, and whatever, and um, again, what we do at our high school, and we're a varsity sport that people have at high school. They have no idea what we do. They know how, have no idea how we do it, and they don't want to. But we have a 40-year <laughs> tradition of running a top quality program that has had minimal issues or problems. And I'll tell you that, frankly, the, the, um, the counseling 
staff at our school is the biggest proponent of that. I don't know how they do it, but these kids are going to Harvard and Yale and Georgetown and Stanford and wherever all else, and so whatever they're doing, let them keep doing it. Um, and uh, so I, I currently maintain a relationship with the athletic director.
Sailing.org, that's where we are. You could call 
any of us. Uh, we're here to help you, and uh, I will be down in Texas this spring, and I'm ready to help you guys, And because uh, I think, unfortunately, it's really one of our weaker districts. Yeah, the other national this day is right here in San Diego. Um, we're not saying you yacht club in their new incredible sailing facility. Um, so if you're looking to send people to see these things, in your case, you definitely want to send those principals and those yeah. commerce yeah. people to the to the to that in Lakewood. But if you have the opportunity to come uh, to some of these other things, again, not to lose sight. This is the top 20 teams in the country. Uh, and so it's highly competitive and it's really cool and it's great. Not necessarily what the other 95 percent of people are doing, as was clearly described here. Within a program, you have a couple of the top teams in the country, and you have some of the most grassroots stuff going on all at the same place. Uh, and really, the same thing going on. They've got a couple of fully organized teams that just borrowed their facility, and then they're doing the grassroots stuff. Well, it's really exciting. Imagine you've got a STEM program. You bring some kids out to school. They never say, they have no idea, whatever. All of a sudden, they see that their school has a sailing team, and they kind of like that little 